If somebody gave you the chance for eternal life, would you take it? Quite a question, isn't it? Now, let me rephrase that. If somebody gave you the chance at eternal youth, would you take that? That's a whole different proposition, isn't it? I don't necessarily want to live forever, but I do want to stay looking pretty good while I'm here. Such is the dilemma facing the protagonist in tonight's story. Another one from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so you could share your stories with me and I could read them all for you. So sit back and relax with your favourite drink one more time, my dear friends, because it's once again time to listen. I've never been a mega beauty, a size 2 or bombshell by any means, but I'm pretty for a woman my size and age. The morning of August 9th started like any other day. I was at the spa my best friend Marty and I frequented once a month for a massage, a haircut, mani pedi. Oh, ladies, you look gorgeous, said Deshaun, our stylist. But have you heard about our latest products? It's called Forever Young. I was just shipped in this morning. If you'd like, maybe you can be my little guinea pigs. Oh, Deshaun, I wake up like this with the perfection of a goddess, Marty said, half joking. I looked at the red bottle and then back at Marty. She took it out of Deshaun's hand and looked at it. There was nothing strange about it, but the directions were simple. One drop on your tongue once a week and begin seeing and feeling the results immediately. Marty looked at me, and then at Deshaun, and shrugged her shoulders. How much? For you guys, twenty for two bottles. He smiled. That was all it took. We walked out of the posh salon in downtown Cleveland, and went into a restaurant, where we had a sitting invitation for the second Friday of every month. Did Emily text you about the party? Marty asked me. No, but I'm sure she will eventually. You know how she is about being timely, I said, rolling my eyes. The waitress came over, and a piece of hair fell into her face. I smiled politely, but my snob of a best friend wrinkled her nose. God, I hope all that hair doesn't end up in my champagne. Oh, sorry, said the waitress, whose name tag said Tiffany. It's just been one of those days. She attempted to tuck her piece of bushy dark hair behind her ear, unsuccessfully. That's okay. We all have those days, I said to her sympathetically. Marty looked at me and rolled her eyes. Oh, we're ready to order. One small cheese plate with strawberries. No crackers, no cheddar, no brie. No dipping sauce, because it's not on my diet. Oh, two glasses of prosecco. Okay, smiled the waitress and looked at me. And for you? Marty stopped her. That's for both of us. It's on my tab. You complete idiot. Did you really think someone like me would want all of that just for themselves? Well, you did say one small cheese plate, she said nervously. Marty rolled her eyes, dismissing her away with a flick of her wrist. The young girl walked away with a defeated look upon her round cheeks. Why do you have to be so bitchy to servants? Kayla... Not everyone shares your love for those that are beneath those of us that enjoy the finer things in life. But she was an idiot. So, what do you think about this solution Deshaun gave us? Not sure. I looked down, almost embarrassed at being at the same table as Marty. I looked at my friend of twenty years, trying to understand how we had been friends for so long. I wanted to leave right then. Maybe I should have. Marty had a way about her. She made a silly face, tossing her long dark hair over her shoulder. Her plump lips and high cheekbones only enhanced her gorgeous looks. I smiled, wishing for five damn minutes to be as beautiful as she was. Eh, I know what you're thinking. I must be that girl who hangs out with women to feel better about themselves. Like, her perfect looks will rub off on me. Well, far from it. I've been best friends with Marty since she was overweight, a pack of Oreos a day girl, and a lousy skin to boot. We were both unattractive nerds in high school. Fast forward to ten years later. Botox, a nip, tuck, 
diet living off starvation. And here was Marty, even if her attitude sucked. Well, she was always kind to me. When she got married to her wealthy husband, Eric, she paid for me and my then-boyfriend to go to Hawaii, just to be at her wedding. So, yeah, Marty has her faults, but I loved her anyway. The waitress came back with a gorgeous food tray and our champagne. Marty picked up both glasses, handing me one of them. Cheers, bitch. Happy second Friday. <laughs> Happy second Friday, I laughed. So, should we try this new formula now? Like, do you think it's okay to take it with alcohol? She asked, dropping three large droplets on her tongue. Well, I don't think it matters anymore, I laughed, dropping only one drop on my tongue. I laughed as I watched her down her entire glass of champagne immediately following the three drops of Forever Young. We spent the next hour drinking, talking about old times, and then we hugged, both taking our Ubers home. We agreed to meet the following month again, as we always did. The following morning I woke up with a strange tingling in my left cheek. My eyes felt dry. When I rubbed them, they both immediately started to bleed from my tear ducts. <sighs> to say I freaked out was quite the understatement of the year. I ran into the bedroom and looked in the mirror. My eyes were blood red. I grabbed my eye drops from the bathroom cupboard, spraying so much visine into my eyes that it ran down my cheeks. The visine seemed to do the trick, but after my eye issue, I began to realize numbness on one side of my cheeks. Was I having a stroke? An allergic reaction? In God's name, was it the plague? I wanted to go to the doctor. But I was too frightened. I looked around and decided, stupidly, the best thing I could do for myself was to jump in a hot shower. I turned the warm water on and stepped inside, instantly feeling a burning sensation flow up and down my body, as though it were burning me alive. My skin felt so thin, dry and loose, like it may fall off my body. I screamed, turning on the ice-cold water instead. I expected it to cause my body to twitch from the sudden burst of cold. Instead, it calmed me. The cold felt so good it could have been more chilled, and I would have been just fine with it. I sighed, feeling almost better. Just as I was trying to feel better again, my phone buzzed. I looked at my phone. It was Marty. I wasn't expecting to hear from her so soon. I picked up the phone. Hi, Marty. But now isn't really a good time. But before I could even get the words out of my mouth, I heard a scream into the other end of my phone. I need you to come over now. I barely recognized the voice on the other end of the phone. It was Marty, however, by the uh, colorful language that was now coming out of her mouth. Marty even sounded muffled and illegible. Some, if that, mothers were being tossed out of her mouth. That much I knew. If I had to bet money on it, I'd say she was drunk. It wasn't unusual to find her still drunk the next morning from the night before. Well, that's if she even went to bed. I didn't even hesitate. I got dressed as quickly as I could, managing to pull myself together long enough to drive to Marty's house. When I pulled in, I noticed her husband's car was gone. I got out of my car and knocked. There was no answer at all. After a few moments, I just let myself in. Marty, are you in there? I walked around her living room, half expecting to find her passed out on the couch from drinking too much. I spent many of the college days helping her to the toilet after a nasty hangover. Kayla! I heard a growl coming from her bathroom. Marty, are you okay? A deep, raspy voice met me again. Kayla, please, I'm very sick. I sighed, forgetting my issues for the time being. And when I opened the bathroom door, well, if I could do it all over again, I don't think I would have done it with so much quickness. I'd have taken my time, the way they do in horror movies. What met me on the other side of the door was the thing that all children and some adults' nightmares were made of. Marty was up against the shower wall, 
in a white negligee. Her perfect figure was covered in scratches up and down her body that looked like she'd taken a razor to every inch of it. And that wasn't the worst part. Her neck was one giant open wound, and you could make out pieces of bone and jaw. Her eyes were red, and her teeth. My God, her teeth were nearly falling out. I backed away in shock, terror, and concern, as tears welled up in my eyes. Who did this to you? Was it Eric? Oh my god. Oh god. Kill the bastard. No. <laughs> she responded with a deep chuckle that caught me off guard. Who? I have no idea, she said, beginning to move towards me. I backed into the door of the bathroom, causing it to slam shut, which startled me. Oh, help me into the kitchen. I need a drink. I walked her to the kitchen and watched my friend pour a glass of white wine as she began to vape. The smoke came out of the hole in her neck. I somehow managed not to puke at the sight of her. God, does it hurt? I asked her. You know? She puffed on her vaping pipe some more, as more cappuccino scent filled the air. Ah, that's the thing. It did at first. There was this tingling all over my body. Oh, my skin felt inflamed, and it was so itchy, hence the scratches all over me. I winced, thinking how it must have felt. Then, she continued, it all stopped. I hid before Eric. He left on his business trip. He didn't even notice his wife was suffering. Instead, he crawled in bed with me, just before it got this bad. He gave me that stupid look he gets when he wants to get laid. God, all I could think of was eating him. Him and his stupid face, God, and those googly eyes. When he's drunk, he gets really annoyed. There's one that goes one way, and the other just ever so slide the other way. She began to cry and laugh. Bloody tears fell from her bloody eyes, and I struggled to find a way to comfort my friend. Eating him? Yeah, I just wanted to bash his stupid face in and eat his brains. I just kept thinking about how good his flesh would taste. She sucked in more of her vaping pipe. I began to think about what had happened to me earlier that morning. Marty was still talking, vaping and struggling to drink her wine. He would have been funny if it wasn't so tragic. I um, had blood coming from my eyes when I woke up this morning. Marty was crying still, and then she looked up at me. Oh, forever young! Her red bloodshot eyes lit up as she squeezed her wine glass, causing it to shatter into tiny shards of pieces. Oh, I'm going to kill Deshaun, she screamed. We need to find out what's in those bottles of forever young, I said, panicking. I'll kill him, and then eat him. Marty was still full of rage. No one is eating anyone. God, we aren't zombies, I yelled at her. That's exactly what we are. Look, I'll go see Deshaun and find out what's in that potion. I'll let you know what I find out. No way you are going alone. Well, how are you going to go? You're literally falling apart. Well... You'll have to help me get dressed, obviously. We stood in Marty's dressing room, trying to find something to cover her body. I managed to wrap her chest and neck in ace bandages. It didn't cover much up, so I put her in a long jacket and a sun hat. I placed her hair over the side of her face, where her jawline was exposed. For the final touches, I put black sunglasses on her, over her hair, to keep her hair in place. Oh. She made for quite the strange-looking character. God, I look like a complete freak. Bitching and moaning isn't helping. Marty smacked me on the shoulder instantly, causing two of her fingers to fall onto the white carpet. I started to laugh, so I just couldn't help it. I guess delirium was setting in. Oh, this isn't funny. Now what am I supposed to do? Marty wailed. Don't you have any duct tape? 
Marty rolled her eyes, picking her fingers up off the floor and putting them in the pocket of her leather jacket. We got to Deshaun's studio, and when we got inside the salon, it was full of beautiful women all getting their hair styled or having makeovers. Marty stood there, eyeing the women, and I could see the longing in her face as one red tear fell onto her pale face. A woman came over to us. Good morning. Do you ladies have an appointment? No, but we wanted to talk to Deshaun about a product he sold to both of us yesterday when we were in. Oh, well, I hate to break it to you, but Deshaun is on a cruise. He left last night. He won't be back for at least two weeks. I took one look around the room. There were women all over the large salon, all who were being gifted sample bags of forever young. Marty and I stood looking at the women with their gift bags full of forever young. Marty was seething in anger and took one look at the young woman at the salon who, as Marty saw it, was standing between her and critical information about Deshaun's whereabouts. Do you have his contact information? Marty growled at the woman. Oh, I'm not supposed to give that out. I need his information. What she's trying to say is that something in those bottles of Forever Young made both of us very sick. And it could also make someone else ill as well, unless you stop handing it out. But I don't understand. Deshaun said it's only vitamin C. Between you and me, she began whispering. He makes it himself with some recipe his grandmother passed down. He takes it every day. It hasn't made him sick at all. Tara, is it? I asked looking at her name tag. Yes, she smiled, bouncing in place as though she were just happy to be acknowledged. Well, perhaps we could just talk to him, you know, to make sure. I mean, I'd hate to have to talk to law enforcement about it, have this place shut down. Law enforcement? Yes, or better yet, the Board of Hell, Marty growled. As she moved forward, her hair moved slightly, revealing her exposed jawline. To our luck, that was all it took. Oh my god, here's his number. She ran from both of us and began grabbing every bag of Forever Young from the patrons of the salon. Neither Marty or I cared about the chaos that was erupting behind us. We took Deshaun's contact information, including his address for good measure, and left the salon. As soon as we were in my car, we wasted no time trying to call him. The phone rang and rang. If he's on a boat, he may not get any reception, I sighed. My bet is he's not even left the airport. I say we drive to his place. I nodded, plugging in the GPS coordinates, and away we went. When we got to Deshaun's apartment... Some cute little pace on the west side. We saw him. He was packing up his trunk for his trip. I parked across the street from the apartment. Oh, I'm gonna eat him, Marty growled. Marty, do you want to stay in the car? No, she sighed. Okay, then stop it. We need his help. By now, I too was feeling overly hungry, and my stomach began to growl fiercely. I had one fleeting thought of what it would be like to taste flesh. I said, one. Oh, something was going on in the chemistry of my body, and my stomach began to hurt. I didn't have time for my pain, however. I had to make it out of this car and over to Deshaun. I struggled to move, as it felt like every organ in my body was changing or shutting down. Before I could reach Deshaun, I collapsed onto the pavement. I was sure something had snapped. I felt no pain, however. Everything was just numb. Marty was behind me, and I saw Deshaun too. He stood in front of my broken body. Kayla? Yep, Marty too, Marty growled, and I gave her a look. She stopped immediately. What are you doing here? Let me call an ambulance. No. He stopped, and between the two of them they helped me stand on my now crooked leg. 
I leaned on Deshaun's pink polo that he wore. He was getting ready for a trip to the tropics. Part of me felt terrible for having to make him late, because there was no way after what we were about to tell him that wouldn't render him paralyzed in shock. Are you sure? He asked, concerned. Yes, Marty growled. Deshaun saw her face then, as her bandage came off. Holy shit, what happened to you? Marty became angry. I held her back from Deshaun. Forever young is what happened. What the hell did you put in that potion? It's turned us into flesh-eating zombies, she growled. Nothing. There's nothing in it except for lemon juice and distilled water. I swear. Your mouth is making mine water more and more. Every time it says something stupid, Marty growled at him again. Deshaun backed away from the two of us. Look, I've no idea what happened to you guys after you left the salon. I can prove it wasn't me. Deshaun had us follow him into his apartment, and his hands shook from fear as he fiddled with his keys to unlock his door. He couldn't take his eyes off Marty, as her bandages were loosening from the summer heat. Finally, the three of us made it inside his small apartment. He walked over to his refrigerator and pulled out a large bottle. He poured a glass of what was inside it, sipping it. Then he passed it around to both Marty and me. See? Water and lemon. That's all, I swear. Are you certain? Did you get the water from another source? No. I distill it myself by boiling it and then adding freshly squeezed lemon from my juicer. God, it's stupid, I know, but I really needed the extra money from the salon after my boyfriend dumped me, leaving me with the expenses of this cruise. I know it was wrong to take money from people, but it's no different than commercials. False advertising, I said, annoyed. Deshaun seemed visibly hurt, while Marty and I knew it wasn't forever young. If not this, idiot... Then what? Marty yelled as her mouth began to twitch uncontrollably. I was afraid of what would happen to her if she continued to deteriorate. What would be left of her? Look, my plane doesn't take off until later. I can spare a few hours to help you guys figure out what has caused this to happen. God, are you just afraid of a lawsuit? Said Marty, visibly holding the rest of her jaw in place. No, I really want to help. What if it's something else? What if it's the zombie apocalypse? I want to know my chances of surviving. I collapsed on Deshaun's couch. Where to begin? Well, where'd you guys go after you left my salon? You guys always meet me there, then eat afterward, right? Maybe it's something you ate? God, oh, I'm starving, Marty groaned. Um... Okay, but let's think first. Deshaun was scared of Marty. Oh, what? Uh, Pierre's pier, I said. Oh, a cheese plate does sound good. So does a leg. Do you think that's on my keto diet? Oh, Marty, focus. We both ate a cheese platter and champagne. Well, that doesn't seem zombie-inducing, Deshaun said. But did anybody give you guys anything besides that? A piece of candy? Did you brush up against someone that looked sick? Anything like that? We both shook our heads. Well, why is Marty worse than you, Kayla? Deshaun was asking a legitimate question. She's the mean one, I joked, not thinking of my repercussions. No, wait, you could be onto something, Deshaun said, hopping to his feet. Wait, for what? Marty wailed. Look, honey, I'm not trying to be mean, but you do have some serious mega-bitch vibes going on. Maybe you piss someone off. Deshaun said as sympathetically as he could muster, all the while fearing he was going to be lunch for two starving zombies. I thought back to yesterday, as foggy as it now was becoming in my mind. I recall Marty giving her best impression of the wicked witch to that waitress. Oh, Marty, it's the waitress. He was so mean to her yesterday. Not my fault. Her idiocy brought it out. 
Well, there's only one thing to do. We have to go talk to her. Deshaun exclaimed excitedly to have the heat pour off of him. We all piled into my car, and I let Deshaun drive as my vision was now failing me. It seemed like the drive took hours. Downtown Cleveland on a summer day, while baseball was going on, wasn't the best driving situation to be involved in. We finally made it to Pierre's Pier, and I was able to make out the waitress from the day before. We found her folding silverware into white cloth napkins, and when she happened to look at the three of us, it didn't seem to surprise her that we were there, although she did look a bit alarmed at Marty's face. You did this, Marty growled. I did, the young waitress said to her, chin out in full defiance. You were so nasty to me yesterday. It was like every customer that came in was mean, hateful, expecting. God, I reached the end of my rope. That doesn't give you the right to hurt people, I said to her angrily. What do you do to me? Marty was ready to snap at any second, if she was already barely holding on by a tiny thread. It's a spell, said the young woman. Honestly, I thought it would have worn off by now. Does it look like it to you? Marty yelled. No, ma'am, she said politely. What did I do to you? I was nice, I said, deflated. Oh, guilty by association, but I didn't put a lot in your drink. Sorry. Oh, fix this. Marty was in her face now, and the young girl was petrified at what her spell had created. Okay, she squealed. Now, Marty approached her, her mouth opening, revealing saliva as a hungry gaze fixated itself over the waitress. There you go again. You can't even be nice for five seconds. Look, sometimes that's all a server wants. A decent tip and be treated like a human being worthy of serving your food. A simple I'm sorry could go a long way right now, bitch. Marty took a deep breath, ready to pounce. I pushed her back. We are sorry. Please help us. Not until she says it. I looked at Marty. Don't you have something to say? Sorry. She said, flexing it more as a question. Not good enough. You still don't care. Look, I'll help your friend. But you'll have to wait till the spell wears off. Oh, fine. I'm sorry, I can't look like this anymore. Marty began to cry tears of blood. The young woman seemed to take pity on her after all. She had us follow her to her car, and together we swallowed a potion of some sort that seemed to make the zombie aging process dissipate within a few hours. I do wish I could say Marty changed forever after this. She'll always be Marty. But... Marty is more careful with how she treats others now. She got her good looks back after all, but sadly, she was not able to reattach her two fingers in time to heal with the rest of her body. Marty keeps them in a jar. Why, I don't know. Maybe it's a reminder of what could have been. Either way, I think we could all consider this a lesson learned. Always be kind to those that work to serve others. Delivery men, night workers who stay up late to service you in gas stations, fast food workers, bartenders who have to deal with their share of drunken assholes, your Uber drivers, oh, and tip them all too. You never know who's having a terrible day. A little kindness goes a very long way. Go on, go on, admit it. You thought it was Deshaun all along, didn't you? So did I, to be fair. Very nice distraction there. Never saw that coming, to be honest. Although there were little hints, weren't there, about the way that they were behaving in the uh, restaurant. Well, I am here, in Holland. First recording session in my new home. 
Hope you like it. <laughs> Not much I can do if you don't. Well, it's all very hectic, but I am finding some downtime to do some recording, so uh, the story should keep coming. Hopefully. Well, that's it for another evening, at least. I've got lots and lots of things to get on with doing here. But I will be back with you again on Wednesday, and I hope you'll join me. Do say you will. Go on. There you go. Until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay? <laughs>